In question three, they ask me to consider the following relation and they want me to write or rewrite the relation as a function of x. Now, the term or the phrase function of x, we write as f of x, that's the uh, function notation, but we know it has the same value as y. So what they're actually asking me to do is to get y by itself. You've got to know that that's what those instructions um, are telling you to do is to actually get the y by itself. So if I go back to this original problem, it was divided by 5. The first thing I did on both sides to cancel that out is I multiplied by 5. And that led me to negative 3x minus 5y equal 25. Since I'm trying to get this y by itself, I then added 3x to both sides. So negative 5y was equal to 3x plus 25. And then finally, I divided both sides by the negative 5 to get that to cancel out there. So my final equation, which you can leave it written like this if you want, or um, it may have the f of x already on there. Just know, make sure you know that f of x means the same as the y. So when you go type it in, um, they're probably going to already have that first part written for you. Step two wants us to evaluate the function when x is equal to negative 1. So that's just a matter of you taking your function, plugging in negative 1 for your x, which is what I'm showing you here. So 3 times negative 1 gave me a negative 3 plus the 25. I get a 22 on top divided by the negative 5 on bottom. And they just want you to leave that in um, fraction form. Don't change it to a decimal. And then finally, they asked me about the implied domain. Remember, with domain, your main concerns are square roots, which we do not have in this problem, and fractions. And so while we do have a fraction, um, the problem with fractions is their bottom cannot be zero. And so you'll notice in this case, the bottom is negative five. That will never be zero, so that is not a concern. And since it's not a concern, then that means our domain is all real numbers. So we can just write the, or use the scripted R to indicate that the domain is all real numbers. On question four, when we're trying to determine the implied domain and we're looking at a function with a square root, remember our focus is only on what's under the square root. So we're going to take that x plus 9 that's under the square root, and what we're going to say is it must be greater than or equal to 0. As we know, we cannot take square roots of negative numbers. That produces something called an imaginary number. So since we can only take square roots of positive numbers, and in this case, we could take the square root of 0 because it's not in the bottom of a fraction, that's why we're saying greater than or equal to zero. And you've got to show me this on your work. So then get x by itself, subtract nine on both sides, and I'm left with x is greater than or equal to negative nine. Now, since it's equal, that means there's a solid point at negative nine, and then greater than would be everything shaded to the right. So an interval notation, as I come from left to right, I start at negative 9. Because it touches, I have to make sure I put the square bracket on the left side. And then when it just keeps going and going to the right, we call that positive infinity. And since we can never touch positive infinity, we close off with a parenthesis.